Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light. I think the one of the most striking passages in Scripture is where Paul writes to the church at Philippi, you know, his, his letter to the Philippians. And he says, and this is in the second chapter of Philippians, he says, have the same attitude, the same mind in you that was in Christ Jesus. Not considering being equal with, with God a thing to be grasped, he emptied himself for our sake. He was obedient to death, even death on a cross. What Jesus is talking about here, when he said, don't resist an evil person, mm -hmm. when he talks about if somebody wants your coat, give him your shirt too. Mm -hmm. He is talking about an act of voluntary love and grace. Mm -hmm. Because what we are is we are the carriers of God's grace. Grace is not deserved. No, grace isn't done because it's the law. Grace is done because it is the gift of God. And since we bring the knowledge of the presence of Christ Jesus into every place, that's our ministry, Paul says to the Corinthians, then part of this is that we offer our love. Not because it's deserved, not because it's required, but because it is the way of God, because love gives. Yes. This is because and this is what astounds the world. You know, I've said oftentimes we need the church is not astounding the world. Not at all. Not at all. We're not acting well, like they, the world. They may be astounding the world, but no. not in the right way. Well, it doesn't astound them anymore because it, it, we're doing <laughs> too, too often then. what is the same things that the world is doing. But it's the fruit of the Holy Spirit in your life. Paul's writing to the Galatians in Galatians chapter five. That we have a love that the world doesn't have. Right. And, you know, you'll see that here. Jesus talking about, listen, even the tax collectors, they love those who love them. Right. But we're to love those who don't love us. We're to love our enemies. We're to love those who persecute us. This is all commentary on the Beatitudes. Yes. Yes. And it takes humility. That's what Paul talks about in second in, in Philippians chapter 2. He is talking about the humility of Jesus Christ. He humbled himself is what it says. And if Christ humbled himself, we are supposed to humble ourselves. And when you give anything, when you give your shirt, when you give your coat, when you give your house, when you give your car, when you give any of your possessions, when you give your time, when you give yourself, you're not giving anything that belongs to you because you were purchased with a price. You belong to the Lord God Almighty. You are extending to these people what belongs to God. And what God is trying to do is give them, express his grace and his love to these people. So yes, they can require you to go one. You've accomplished nothing because if they require a sinner to go one, he's going to go one. Exactly. You do something other. You go beyond that because that's when it starts to be the grace of God at work in and through your life. And this is ever so important. This is what makes it so radical. Mm. The church is acting worldly because we have been acting worldly for almost 2,000 years. And we act, you know, we act these ways. Oh, I, 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 I mumble, grumble. Mm. Do it. Now, I'm going to say this once, and I'll probably wind up saying it again. As a matter of fact, remind me if I forget to say it again. These are hard teachings. We talked last week, and I mentioned it in John chapter 6. Many of the disciples of Jesus Christ stopped following him. Because his teaching was too difficult. That's John 666, by the way. His teaching is difficult. It is horrifically difficult to the flesh. To the natural man. And, and what happens so often is that when Jesus says something as radical as this, don't resist an evil person. What we do is we start to tweak it. We start to get theological. We start to examine it. I've got to read this in the Greek and see what he really meant. Mm -hmm. You know what he really meant? Don't resist an evil person. When he says if somebody requires you to go one mile, go two. You know what it says? What he means in the Greek, what he means in the Aramaic, what he means in the Hebrew, what he means in, in the Italian, in the French. And he means do it. There's a, a, there's a verse in the Gospel of John. John 7, 17. It says, if any man is willing to do his will... He shall know of the teaching, whether it is of God or whether I speak from myself. Absolutely. Jesus said, 
You know, a lot of people have difficulty on that. Oh, it's hard to understand. Mm -hmm. It's not hard to understand. It gets very difficult to understand if you're not willing to do it. That's right. If you don't have a heart that is willing to do these difficult things with Jesus, then all of a sudden it becomes fuzzy. All of the teaching becomes fuzzy. But if your heart is to obey the word of God, without that question, all of a sudden it all becomes perfectly Very clear, clear to you. Right. It's like little kids. Mm -hmm. I mean, you ever see, really, especially little Calvin and Hobbes type boys. Take a little boy that's six years old and mommy says, it's, I have some ice cream over here in the kitchen. That kid could be sitting under the roar of an engine. He could be sitting 190 feet away. Mommy says, I have ice cream for you. Bam, there. You heard that. Let, let the mother shout at the top of her lungs, it's time to go to bed. <laughs> I wonder what she means. <laughs> I wonder if she means right now. I wonder if she really means. I wonder if she knows and... And all of a sudden, all of these, you know, you start to question because you don't want to do, do it. it. That's right. The teaching of God is simple. These are simple answers for very complex times. And these are indeed complex times. But it becomes very simple when you have a willingness to obey Jesus Christ. Consider what I say. For the Lord will give you understanding in everything.